beautiful thing is yeah. that, you know, you, you look at that God always has people and places. So you have yeah. your praying aunt. Yeah. I love mm -hmm. the story of the couple in the car that saw mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. I also love the part where a coworker looked at you and said, you would look good in yeah. color. Yeah. Now, I mean, here's the thing, like we go about our lives, we're busy people, but I don't think we really understand mm -hmm. or get like how important it is to speak to people, mm -hmm. to speak right. encouragement. Yes, and even absolutely. on this whim, you're like, I can't say that. But mm -hmm. a coworker goes, I wonder what you look good like in color. Next thing you know, you got blonde, you strip your black hair yeah. and you're wearing a cream yeah. shirt the next right. day. Right, right, yeah. I mean, and then over and over in your life, mm -hmm. people spoke mm -hmm. to you, saw you, cared for you, mm -hmm. took time for you. Yeah. I think that was, that's a big part mm -hmm. as I sit here listening going, am I a person like that who is willing to invest to speak to be mm. present and see people yeah. i think that really is a testimony of the people mm -hmm. in your life that have that god brought to you yeah. to help you along mm -hmm. your way and that probably makes you, you know? more sensitive too mm -hmm. to be oh, a yeah. person yeah. like that yeah. for yeah. others yeah as yeah. well and i think yeah, with, right. with goth culture though mm. the thing is like the idea is like i think a lot of people are just scared you know what yeah. i mean mm -hmm. and, well, it's, and, idea. Idea. and like <laughs> you said you wore this to intimidate people mm -hmm. this is yeah. your armor meanwhile mm -hmm. these 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 They're kids broken. inside are totally broken. looking for someone to say, I know you yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and you matter and yeah. I see beyond this stuff. Yeah. I see that potential. doesn't define you. Mm -hmm. And how would you encourage people? Because we do still have, I mean, goth is still around us. And, yeah. and I mean, I was, I was a depressed teenager. I, I didn't embrace maybe goth culture, but I certainly embraced dark mu darker music. I embraced a lot of darker things, thinking that that was a way of expressing mm -hmm. what was going on in me and this deep mm -hmm. thing. And, you know, God has since shown me that wasn't depth, that was just drama. But, um, <laughs> no, seriously, no, yeah. like, and, and that, no, I had that revelation that this is just drama. Like, I mean, we embrace these dramatic things thinking they actually are deep and meaningful, and they're not. not. They're yeah. just, they're counterfeit things. Yeah. They're just things that we hold on to because maybe God's too scary. Right. And I just think, you know, what would you say to people who maybe have a goth kid right now, or they're, they have kids that they don't know quite why they're dressing like this, or they don't know why they're listening to this music they don't know why they they're just there's this barrier mm -hmm. yeah. how do they get through that I, th I think the biggest thing is communication um, mm -hmm. that and I know that um, even you know some of my kids are here that you're gonna lack communication but to be open to talk about anything to be open and just mm -hmm. I think for a child mm -hmm. to know they can ask you any question on the face of the planet and that you won't go well that's stupid why are you asking me that you know mm -hmm. or when you're 18 I'll talk about those things talk about mm -hmm. every issue we're talking about the sex drugs and rock and roll issues and I could never do that I could never open up so you sort of um, German is verklempt you close it up and you, and you hold it in I would really really um, say to com communication is huge and when you start to see these things see who they're hanging around and um, see you know where they're going why are they going you know and just talking about those things but not in a condemning way just talk about it and showing that you still love and that you are concerned about maybe the, some of these things. But what if they're afraid? What if parents are afraid to go there? I think a lot of parents yeah. are. I think, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, it's like, how do you talk to your kid about sex? Yeah. Or uh, this, you know, black mascara makeup you're wearing. Mm -hmm. Like, how, how do you even begin? Because I think you have to be in a place where you can be open, but yourself, you also have to be yeah. ready and open to talk about these. I, I think if your kid is there, you're, you're ready. Okay. If your kid is already yeah. there, you're ready. Yeah, mm -hmm. and because it says yep. be ready in and out of season, mm -hmm. and so, and I think it's really praying a lot and asking the Holy Spirit Absolutely. to show you, right. you know, yeah. how can I instead of going, you know, get that off your face, you know, what's wrong with you, mm -hmm. saying, oh, you know, that's kind of interesting, and so they want you to draw attention to some of those things, mm -hmm. and instead of going, take that evil thing off, you know, what is that, you know, mm -hmm. to draw and and sort of talk about those things, and mm -hmm. hey, you know, what do you like about that? Uh, I watched a couple of movies with the boys uh, or a couple of shows, and I says, you know, what do you like? It, you know, things that are like. Oh, I don't want them watching this, but I'm going, <laughs> let's sit down. What do you like about this show? And and, and just talking about the like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, you know, I guess I don't really like it that much. Mm -hmm. And just to be open. So we, we always feel inadequate, mm -hmm. but you have to make the time and just yeah. do it because you don't know another moment that you have with that child mm -hmm. before they go cross completely over yeah, or leave right. home. Yeah. yeah. And God has blessed you and your husband with how many children? Three boys. Three boys. Three. I think we have a picture. There yeah. they are. Yeah. Who are we looking at? Um, we're looking at uh, Josh is the tallest. He's 16. Uh, Jonathan is 13 and Andrew is 8. And they're our beauties. Okay. Yeah, they're great. They're, they're great kids. Well, we are so glad that you are with us today. We're so Thank glad you. that God completely did an extreme yeah. makeover on you me too, me too. many years ago yeah, and God that you so are good. now able to speak into the lives of many people watching now mm. of 
parents, of grandparents who are praying for those yeah. who are going mm -hmm. through this this yeah. stage of goth and mm -hmm. subculture. And so, thank mm -hmm. you, Rosalie. You're welcome. Thank you, you know, I was thinking as Rosalie was sharing that I mean, there's a scripture verse in the Bible in the book of Second Corinthians that sums up what God does for us. I mean, it seems almost too simple, but it's true. It's for, found in Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seventeen. It says, "If anyone." is in Christ. That means does business with God through the cross of Jesus. If anyone comes to God willingly, surrenders and says, God, I need you, Jesus, forgive me. He's a new creation, a new creature. She is brand new. The old is behind you and the new is in your present and in your future. But first you have to come to the cross. I don't know if God is scary to you. As Rosalie was saying to some people, God seems a little scary, but he doesn't have to be. You need to know that God loves you. He loves you. When you look in the mirror right now, no matter what you see looking back at you, you see someone that God loves. And he went to the ultimate extreme to show that love for you by sending Jesus to the cross. Jesus, God in flesh.